thank you very much for the very nice introduction. And um, my topic is about PowerPaste. And what is particularly important about PowerPaste is you can provide hydrogen with it uh, without the need for any new infrastructure. Uh, so basically, it's an energy carrier solution which is self-discharge free. Uh, it has zero emissions. You don't need any filling stations for it. And uh, it is based on a paste-like material which can be used uh, to produce hydrogen. And back in the year 2013, it also, uh, the fundamental science behind it won us the F-Cell Award. And we were also featured in a very popular German inventors magazine with that invention. If you compare power paste um, with one of the uh, competitor technologies, which is secondary batteries, uh, so rechargeable batteries, you see uh, secondary batteries, of course, do have some advantages. One of the advantages is uh, they can directly store electricity and have a, therefore a low system complexity. And also, uh, batteries, of course, have low OPEX costs, at least if they are recharged many times, for example, like 500 cycles and more. And of course, the technology readiness of uh, batteries is uh, very far ahead. Uh, they are available on the market already. But batteries also have problems. They do have a low specific energy and energy density. Uh, their durability is limited. They're aging very fast. Uh, they have a quite high self-discharge. You need a charging infra infrastructure, which is a particular problem, uh, uh, for example, for battery vehicles, uh, especially uh, when we are talking about large cities. Uh, it's nearly impossible to integrate the uh, necessary charging infrastructure. And also, coupled to the charging infrastructure, the charging power is limited, so you, the recharging times are uh, quite... Uh, long and also batteries have a limited temperature range for example at uh, minus uh, temperatures um, the uh, capacity of batteries just uh, the available capacity drops and of course batteries have high um, capital expenditures per installed kilowatt hours if you compare all that to power paste technology uh, it's completely the opposite uh, of course, it's a technology which is not available on the market yet, but we have it at the demonstrator level, so TRL5 uh, on a uh, readiness scale. And um, PowerPace does have higher OPEX than batteries, at least if you need lots of electricity and a higher system complexity because you need uh, a fuel cell and a hydrogen generator. But it does have um, very significant advantages as well. Uh, first, uh, foremost, uh, it has a very high specific energy and energy density, a very strong, long shelf life of years. Um, it has nearly uh, zero self-discharge and most important, it is independent from any charging infrastructure. You can just use power paste and, for example, post it or uh, transport it um, uh, uh, via uh, trucks uh, to get it to the point of use. Uh, you can use it to instantaneously refill. You just swap cartridges or you can also pump power paste because it's a paste-like uh, formulation. Uh, which makes refilling very easily possible. And it uh, provides the full capacity over the whole temperature range. And last point, uh, it has a very low uh, capital expenditure per installed kilowatt hour. Up, oh, one to four. No. There we go. <laughs> um, Power paste has other advantages um, if you compare it to other uh, storage technologies. Uh, so first, if you compare it to hydrogen, you don't need any compressors. As I already said, you don't need any uh, refilling stations, but you also don't need any high pressure equipment, for example, storage tanks. If if you compare it to diesel or gasoline, you don't have any emissions. Uh, it is completely noise-free, and because you don't because you don't have any moving parts, uh, uh, you don't have any maintenance costs as well. 
And if you finally compare it with methanol uh, in combination with a direct methanol fuel cell, uh, it's a non-toxic uh, formulation. You can also use it indoors. And most important, uh, you can provide high power densities with power paste. But probably the most important point in certain applications, even today, the total cost of ownership, so the uh, CapEx plus, plus OPEX costs, can be much lower compared to all other technologies. No. If you compare the specific energies and energy, energy densities of power paste, with other technologies available on the market, um, you can see it has much higher specific energies, which means uh, watt hours per kilogram and uh, uh, energy densities, which is watt hours per liter. For example, if you compare it to lithium ion batteries, it nearly has 10 times uh, both the energy density and specific energy. And even if you compare it to methanol in combination with a DMFC and gasoline, especially uh, if used for uh, p small power generators in the area of one kilowatt, uh, if you include conversion losses, it's still uh, competitive or even higher. So basically, this makes power paste predestined for two different uh, application scenarios. So first application scenario is stationary systems. For example, backup, backup power systems, security applications, disaster recovery, um, uh, mobile networks, uh, security surveillance monitoring systems. So basically systems where you need grid independence, high reliability, and low capex costs per installed uh, kilowatt hours. And one particular advantage and the advantage here is it uh, has really low maintenance costs because it uses a fuel cell based systems. But secondly, uh, the second ap application scenario is portable and mobile systems. Um, so basically where you need uh, the high specific energy and energy density, uh, the ease of use and uh, noiseless and zero-less um, electricity production. So it makes it predestined, for example, uh, light electric vehicles, drones for camping auto applications, forklift trucks, and even uh, applications like these autonomous underwater vehicles. So how does power paste uh, work? Basically, you have a hydrogen generator uh, where you produce hydrogen for a fuel cell um, by adding water and power paste to the hydrogen generator. And the fuel cell then, um, after a DC-DC converter, for example, um, uh, uh, drives a motor or any other electric load. The chemical reaction behind this is um, the power paste's main ingredient is a substance called magnesium hydride. And this magnesium hydride reacts with water to produce hydrogen. And one particular in particularly interesting uh, fact about this reaction is half of the produced hydrogen actually comes from the water. So you double the amount of available hydrogen by this reaction. Maybe some of you haven't heard about magnesium hydride or the hydrolysis reaction of, uh, of power paste before. Um, one of the reasons in the past was that magnesium hydride, even though it's uh, well known for uh, decades, if you try to react magnesium hydride with water, uh, basically nothing happens. What you can see here is the hydrolysis time and uh, the conversion uh, progress, or the reaction progress, and you can see 0% nearly reaction progress after 10 minutes. Uh, and the reason for this is normally these um, magnesium hydroxide passivation layers immediately form upon the magnesium hydride upon contact with water. And what we were able to, um, or our breakthrough uh, was, we blended magnesium hydride firstly with a metal salt additive, and then we made a paste-like uh, formulation to dramatically increase the reaction kinetics. And um, also, um, 
power paste can react with any kind of water. So you can use, of course, deionized water, but you can use ordinary tap water, even seawater for the reaction. And the science behind this also, as I mentioned before, won us the F-Cell Award and has been published uh, in a scientific journal. So how is power paste produced? Basically, you start with magnesium powder, you add hydrogen, then you blend it with a metal salt, and then you blend it with a so-called ester. And for the non-chemists of you, uh, your salad oil uh, at the lunch break is also an ester, so it's a very similar component which is non-toxic and uh, readily and cheaply available. From a production uh, point of view, uh, the hydrogenation um, takes place in a, a so-called stirred autoclave reactor um, at very moderate uh, temperatures and pressures of um, 350 uh, degrees centigrade and 5 to 6 bars. Then in the second step, uh, the magnesium hydride uh, is uh, converted into power pipes by the addition of metal salt and ester uh, in an agitator bed meal and then uh, it's uh, filled into cartridges uh, in a filling machine. So it's a very straightforward and simple process and uh, we uh, are currently building a pilot production plant with a maximum output of four tons power paste per year. So this is the equivalent of 6.4 megawatt hours per year. And this, of course, is enough for many pilot applications. And it's still a very small scale, or relatively small scale, as you can see, and can be easily scaled to a much larger scale. Here you can see our TRL5 um, uh, prototype hydrogen and power generator. And the most expensive components of the, um, uh, this power generator, uh, or hydrogen generator rather, are a linear actuator and a water pump. And there's of course some electronics necessary to provide uh, the reaction control. But that's it, apart from this fuel cell, it's a very simple system. Here you can see the technical data of our, of our TRL5 prototype. So limited by the power of the fuel cell, it has a 100 watt continuous power output uh, and currently weighs 14 kilograms. But uh, we are very certain that this can be uh, built much more lightweight uh, and also uh, much smaller. The uh, technology behind power paste is patented, so we were uh, granted uh, the European and the US patent for power paste, and uh, also the power paste uh, hydrogen generators uh, are patent pending. I want to finish uh, with a short outlook, um, so, so my vision uh, where can power paste go beyond these niche applications or entry market applications uh, I've shown you previously. I think power paste can be used for a, vi a wide variety of applications, also automotive application, if um, it is produced in a different way. And um, one particular step is the magnesium production. So magnesium uh, today is produced by the pigeon process, a very energy consuming process. If you switch that process, uh, process to molten salt electrolysis, it's a much uh, more efficient process. And um, I think excess electricity can be used to both produce magnesium and also hydrogen, which you need to produce power paste. And if you do the maths and run the whole cycle, um, the total efficiency, power to power, so uh, primarily electricity to paste and back to electricity can be as high as uh, 30 or 31 percent. And uh, that might look quite low, but if you compare this to all power to X processes, uh, you are usually in the range of 20% for power to X. 
And even if you compare it to a 700 bar compressed hydrogen, you only have 37% because, of course, the losses of electrolysis and fuel cell, but also the compression losses. And uh, power paste can be really comparable, and you don't need any uh, sophisticated infrastructure. So we are looking for partners, uh, basically end, u end users and R&D partners for power systems, both for mobile and stationary applications. We are looking for materials manufacturing, especially uh, if you're in the area of magnesium or magnesium powder production for chemical plant manufacturers, but also the chemical industry. And finally, last slide, uh, we offer the whole um, design cycle, starting with design studies, the material development, upscaling and production, and the whole engineering process, including electronics development, software de development, and system uh, testing out of one hand. So if you're interested, please come visit us at our booth number 45 in this hall, and thank you very much for your interest, and I'm looking forward to your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Markus Fock. Are there any questions from the audience? Okay. Um, I'm wondering, you said your vision. Yes. What about the time frame? There was yes. no time. What, what do you yes. have in mind? What do you think? For the vision, I think uh, 10 years is, um, is realistic. Um, if, there are, uh, if there's enough money, if there's, um, but we are working with customers today already uh, who think this is absolutely possible and it can be changed. But even, that, even until then, uh, there are applications uh, for power paste, of course niche applications, but uh, there are economically um, advantages even today. So I think it's worth to head over to the booth uh, 45 to have uh, for future talks. Thank you very much again. Give a big kind of applause to Dr. Markus Fock. Thank you very much.